All right, everybody, uh, we are into the final stretch. The last two talks of the day start about now. I think that's obvious. It's been a long day, isn't it? Uh, does anyone think... Uh, uh, how do I ask it? Okay, is everyone glad that they made it down to B-Sides today? Yeah. Yeah, yeah cool. Uh, has, uh, what... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> think of feedback and uh, things that we can improve and things that you'd like to maybe see differently for next year and please do pass that on uh, at the end of the day. Feedback is really, really important for any conference and particularly for a B-side which is really all about you, you folk and the community out there at large because without that we don't know whether everything's really good or really bad. Uh, so please just fill out feedback when, when you get the email or, 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 or say it in person to anyone over here as well. And um, uh, we'll, we'll make sure we incorporate that in, into future events. Uh, so without further ado, if you, uh, I guess you're all here for some uh, OSX up forensics and automating it and uh, doing all that cool stuff. So I'll hand it over to Cuba Sendor for his talk. Thank you. Thanks a lot for coming here. Uh, so, yeah, my name is Kuba. I work at Yelp in London. Uh, just a short disclaimer at the very beginning, because the title might be a bit confusing. So this talk is not going to be about the latest advancements in the side of production. So if you're like on Prop Query or anything like that, and you came to us about some growing technology, uh, yeah, sorry to disappoint you. We're going to talk about the uh, MacBooks. Uh, so just show quick uh, raise of hands, like how many of you are actually using MacBooks? I see one guy over there. Awesome. So yeah, I'm not going to be, uh, let's say, alone talking about all this, what's going on the uh, Mac with respect to tomorrow. Even, run, even runs Mac off, it's not Linux or Windows or... <laughs> so, uh, few words about me. So I joined Yelp uh, last uh, year in July. Uh, I'm mostly involved in malware incident response and apart from that, uh, some sort of other responsibilities are including uh, all different software for automation of our security processes, of our incident response processes. So everything with like security uh, events, incident management. Uh, previously I worked uh, for about uh, three and a half years uh, at SAP in Sophia Antipolis in South France, where I was part of the security and trust research uh, group. I graduated in 2011 from HH University of Science and Technology in Krakow in Poland, and also I was doing both double degree with uh, Telecom Power Tech Institute in Sophia Antipolis. Um, so yeah, uh, Yelp, I'm not sure how many of you know and use Yelp. I'm using it every day. <laughs> Pretty uh, cool, especially if you're like in Newtown, like for me it was Manchester. Um, it was founded around 11 years ago, about the day, I think it was like early August 2004, where uh, this gentleman over there, Jeremy Stoppelman, our current CEO, founded it with uh, another of his colleague from PayPal. And what's really interesting is like how over this 11 years we grew to right now support over 29 locals. I'm not sure what, how accurate is this, like, because we're launching also in new countries. Uh, over this year, we just released like Yelp in three new countries. And that adds up to around 73 million of the mobile users and also uh, around 139 million uh, monthly visitors on our website. Uh, and what that means is that we have around 3,000 employees right now, and most of them are using Macs. And the problem is when something like phishing or uh, some other Mm, sources of malware viruses are uh, triggered by these employees and they download something like we've seen for instance in the previous talk some employees clicking on some phishing emails uh, downloading bad examples uh, well you were thinking that maybe like on the max they're quite secure that was like previously what were, they were known as like better than windows machines pcs uh, but it's no longer the case, they're sort of like victims of their own popularity. So, because right now more and more people are using MacBooks, it's also that uh, uh, attackers, uh, people who create malware, who create all these uh, phishing campaigns, they're also targeting more and more uh, Mac users. And especially, for instance, if you go to websites like CNET, 
uh, Donald Cine dot com, they're actually full of malware. Like most of the applications, there are bundled with malware. Like if you're running uh, any sort of like uh, corporate uh, firewall for blocking websites, you probably block Donald dot com because it's coming with all this package malware. So any kind of applications like advertising themselves as free media player, or free media converter for MacBook, it's pretty much most of the time smuggled with malware. So we see that more and more nowadays. And for the past few uh, months, we didn't have really a proper response for that. Like whenever there was an employee coming to our help desk with their infected uh, MacBook, most of the response was looking like this uh, animation. So we just so like, okay, yeah, sorry for that. We're just gonna wipe your machine, give you a new one, or like reinvent your system, because there was only so much we could do. Uh, we were lacking this uh, sort of like investigative power to figure out what was going wrong, where the malware came from. And uh, so my manager, uh, Ivan, he sat down over the weekend and created this solution called Blazex Collector which is a pretty awesome tool for forensic evidence collection and later on uh, also we had some analysis capabilities for that. So this project is open source, it's uh, available there on GitHub. Uh, you can just go check it out. Uh, it's very simple, so it's just like one Python file. So whenever we have some infected machine, uh, our help desk personnel will just uh, go to the person, uh, just run this, like, what we want to do, first of all, is like, we won't prevent any further uh, proliferation of the malware. So uh, usually help desk personnel will directly disconnect the uh, machine from the network. So. Uh, the problem here with running any other forensic tool was like, hey, how do we actually get there? So uh, maybe not very secure manner, we usually hand over this file on one uh, USB stick, <laughs> which is maybe not a very secure practice. Uh, so I'm like, imagine that such a uh, simple tool can be just shipped as a, as a file already on the version uh, MacBook. Uh, so it doesn't have any other dependencies than that, so uh, usually you can just run it very easily. And uh, what it does, it collects all this, uh, all these different forensics uh, from the machine that you can later analyze. Uh, what it produces uh, eventually is a JSON output. Uh, it's very nice. JSON is beautiful, so <laughs> it's very simple. Uh, it's very human readable, very machine readable in the, in the sense that it's very easy to process. Um, so each sort of a uh, forensic. Uh, source uh, produces one JSON output line that we can later on analyze. Um, what's also particular about uh, OSX is that it stores most of this data in very particular format. Uh, so it was very important for us to collect as much of, uh, as possible that machine was already giving to us and uh, part of the data stored on the MacBook disk in a, a SQLite uh, Databases, so it's very easy in Python to actually uh, just uh, grab the content of the uh, of the SQLite database. So in just this few, I think around nine, ten lines of Python code, we are able to, um, to grab uh, some uh, pieces of forensic information from the machine. Uh, what's not in SQLite databases? Uh, there, there is a particular format similar to Windows Registry. Uh, in uh, Mac OS X called plist, property list. It's sometimes in the binary format, sometimes it is uh, just a plain text if you have it encoded some sort of like XML that you see here on the uh, right hand side, uh, sort of left hand side. Right? Cool. Um, and uh, yeah, there, there is like multiple uh, flavor of different uh, forensic information stored in different parts of the of the system that OSX Collector uh, easily collects and put in one uh, very uniform output format. Uh, so uh, to read this playlist, we were actually using the Foundation library. Foundation is sort of a wrapper around all Objective-C uh, functions, so there are very uh, lengthy in the names, so that's maybe something uh, going away from all the Python conventions. Uh, this is more sort of like this Objective C wrapper uh, that is uploaded in Python and that made it possible for us to use um, direct its code to, for instance, read the playlists uh, in the OSX collector code. Mm. So, 
So what kind of information is this collector is gathering from the operating system uh, from macOS, uh, apart from like some general system information, like obviously the version, uh, which accounts are running on the um, on the system, it also collects uh, the list of kernel extensions, uh, like this downloads, applications, uh, also all sorts of web browser information, so browser history which might be very important in the uh, forensics analysis, so we see all the user's activity uh, in, the, in the browser, we see which files were downloaded, uh, we are also able to grab some email information, so mostly like download the attachments, from the system email application um, and all different sort of items that also Max stores um, in this uh, sort of like Kilis, this Kilo, uh data sources. So as mentioned before, this is uh, sort in one uniform uh, JSON uh, sort of blob uh, which contains all uh, common unified fields for us. So for instance, when there is, whenever there is some file involved in like uh, download, uh, browser download, we store MD5, uh, check some for these files. Uh, we uh, store some timestamps, uh, also, uh, for instance, signature chain, and some list info, like what was the actual source of this information. So, uh, OSX Collector does a pretty neat job of unifying all the timestamps, so I've shown the uh, Produce like a all different source, source of forensic information, and this is very cumbersome when you're uh, trying to gather them manually from all these different sources. Because uh, unfortunately, all different web browsers, for instance, they store timestamp information in uh, all their respective formats. So you can sometimes have like milliseconds from 1970 or uh, seconds from uh, 91 or like different browsers to like different particular. Uh, what they consider the, 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 the zero, I guess, and the, 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 the start of the epoch. So uh, actually one of my first tasks at Yap was to try to unify all the different times of information. It took me around like a day just to figure out like, um, what is using which format to store the information. Uh, so you sort of like uh, in bank approach to store um, one single format of time of information because this is Pretty much important when you do forensics analysis. Uh, <coughs> right, I'm sure I'll show some examples later on. Um, I talked about the hashes. So, well, you may hear different uh, stories about hashes nowadays from the industry. Like, uh, yeah, antiviruses. Well, they if they do really just a stupid hash comparison, this is not really maybe being powerful. We should do more like behavior analysis, this sort of stuff, because you can obfuscate that. Uh, well, I mean, if you believe in defense and depth, this is one of the principles, so uh, still hashes are very important if you're using services like our software. This is uh, something that might be really, uh, at least the first attempt to try to gather what's going on there. So they're pretty useful, they're not that. Uh, also the quarantines, so uh, whenever you download something from the internet, you usually notice this uh, block of uh, this window on formation. Um, displaying like, hey, are you sure you want to open this application? I mean, yeah, I've downloaded it from internet, so I'm pretty sure I have to open it, but what's really cool about it, apart from uh, you click open, is that this information actually stays forever on your disk in a playlist. So uh, once we're running the uh, forensics collection uh, on the infected system, we will actually see all the different quarantines that were displayed for a user, and we can already uh, grasp some information about like, what's the source of, uh, of the infection. Uh, started items is another thing that uh, OSX Collector uh, collects. So on OS10, there are like around seven different places where the started items can pop up, like your uh, home directory, uh, the main root application, uh, started directory, uh, things like that. So it all covers all the different sources together and uh, uh, push them in this unified way. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, start of items are pretty important because, yeah, if you have some malware in the startup, like, it's like game over. So, uh, yeah, pretty much for us, uh, information like, yeah, at least for this uh, machine, what we will do is probably just do this sort of like baseball bat thing with the machine, just wipe it and don't, uh, don't try to end it in any other way. Mm, so, 
also uh, think about signature chains like OLX doesn't really care so much about the uh, whether the uh, binaries are signed or not. Uh, but for you, it might be really important information that adds to your uh, process. So if you have some unsigned binaries, uh, it can easily uh, give you a hint about uh, them, and uh, this might be uh, also useful for your uh, forensic analysis. So uh, yeah, this few uh, slides were showing more information about like uh, all different things that. Uh, OSX collector is able to collect, but actually, uh, yeah, the collection is sort of like this hard, carbon on way that uh, you don't want to do manually, it automates that. What's really uh, cool and fun is the sort of like, between art and science is the uh, forensic analysis. This is uh, what's, let's say, more interesting. Uh, I'll show a couple of examples how, how we can approach that with the output that OSX collector gives us. So uh, as mentioned previously, timestamps are uh, very helpful when it comes to figuring out what's going wrong with the machine. Uh, so if you have your uh, um, infection alert, for instance, you have some information from antivirus, like, oh yeah, uh, this machine got infected this, this time, you can already start right away uh, with a very simple grab around the timestamp, uh, like a few seconds off and back will already give you um, sort of like first hence like where this uh, uh, malware might came from. Uh, if you change with tools like JQ, which is really cool way of making JSON even more readable, and uh, for instance, shooting something like SQL, SQL-like queries for uh, JSON content, you can, uh, in very few steps, just list you all the URLs that were visited at the time, uh, it can show you the activities from a certain user of the machine. Um, also for us, uh, some of the indication was like whenever there were a couple of accounts on the same machine uh, where machine was reused among different employees, some of the malware that was already there before we started like doing all this forensic analysis uh, was staying there and it was easy for us to figure out like, hey, yeah, this is coming from, from the other user. Uh, that's not anymore on this machine, so yeah, let's wipe it right away. I mean, there is no way uh, we should uh, continue reusing this information without uh, really wiping the system, uh, making it clean probably, so the user can uh, can have a fresh installation without any of like full malware and things like that. So this is really neat, but when it comes to like doing it every day for every alert you have, it might be a bit cumbersome. So why don't we actually automate that? And uh, this is what we uh, started doing, so all these sort of manual steps that we uh, uh, noticed that we were doing continuously with every incident, um, we started like looking at this like, yeah, there are some small things we're doing every time, like starting, for example, from grab around the um, time timestamp of, uh, of the infection, uh, contacting some uh, credible sources like VirusTotal or OpenDNS, uh, with the hashes or with the domains that you visited and see what's wrong with them. Uh, so we just uh, said like, yeah, let's 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 automate that, and uh, we created sort of chain of filters that we can pass this uh, <coughs> output of OSX, OSX, OSX collector through. Uh, that will enrich all this information uh, one by one. So they're very simple, and the way they work like uh, is each filter sort of like adds more and more information into this uh, output generated from OSX collector. And at the very end, the last step is uh, sort of like recommendation and things that the uh, output filters can suggest you, for instance, like blocking certain domain or adding uh, certain file hash to your internal blacklist. Uh, so for instance, find domain, domains filter will uh, just uh, try to have like URL or for instance some domains with subdomain and try to dissect it into a list of possible domains that could be uh, that this could be uh, related to uh, so if you, if you have subdomain or we'll just uh, list over like the uh, root domain if you have some URL you will try to get all uh, different domains that are appearing in this URL so for instance if some of the uh, domains are in uh, Rufus parameters it will also uh, try to uh, identify them and directly uh, 
take them out of them and put them in this separate build. Uh, why this is very uh, useful is that uh, later on we can directly check this uh, against uh, some of our internal blacklists. So throughout this uh, continuous um, uh, malware and business process, we gather our sort of internally um, blacklist with all different suspicious URLs, uh, suspicious domains that we were checking directly right away before even, let's say, uh, digging deeper into uh, into any of the analysis. So if user visited some of the website, it was already potentially a sign of, uh, yeah, this is, uh, there is something wrong with the machine. So I knew things like, yeah, string football that's called, uh, just do things like that, or, or previously mentioned downloads that come, uh, see that. Yeah, if there was a visit to that website, we were like, one or another sure that uh, user has something going on with the machine and um, it was already indication for some further steps we could take. Mm -hmm. So uh, this check blacklist filter is uh, just checking this uh, domains that were uh, sort of excavated from the initial SX collector output and uh, trying to uh, see if they match any of the uh, blacklist entries. Um, What's coming next is so we have all these different uh, sources. Uh, Jim was mentioning in the previous talk a uh, couple of things like uh, malware become very useful um, source to see if uh, there is something wrong with the domain. Uh, there is also shadow server uh, to look at the hashes. There is virusal that we are using. Uh, so for any hash in the uh, output of the OSX collector, we can uh, just try to see uh, virus total information about this hash and it will already give us indication about uh, how many uh, hits were, were found. So what virus total is doing is, uh, for those of you who don't use it, uh, is, uh, it's not, let's say, um, antivirus or any scanning tool on its own, it's just more like covering uh, sort of responses from all different anti uh, antiviruses like Kaspersky or Sophos. Um, and I think there are around like 64 <coughs> sources, 67 sources of uh, different uh, things that this is checking through. So it does all this heavy lifting for you. You don't have to go uh, through any of these websites on your own. Uh, you can just like submit file or file hash to virus tool and uh, take it back. So what we've done, we just wrote the uh, virus total API um, in this output filter, and uh, it just goes for us through all the different hashes found in the uh, throughout the forensics collection and it uh, augments the initial OSX collector output with the uh, information found out from the uh, virus level API. Um, there are some also uh, things included in this uh, uh, lookup filter that makes it uh, a bit more speedy than just like going one by one for the request. It actually issues uh, multiple requests at the same time, so uh, there is uh, it, it speeds up it's, it, it's quite a bit. Uh, there is also sort of internal hashing, so uh, uh, we, uh, we we are using premium subscription for our so that we have around like, I think 25 uh, requests per minute or something like that, some augmented um, capabilities when it comes to request rate, but uh, I think that free version comes just like with four requests per second, so this is sort of like very, uh, it could be from CCN, and uh, that's a little bit holding it, uh, you back from doing this uh, massive analysis of all the uh, domains, knowing that if you run OSX collector on the machine that was run for a couple of months, there are probably like thousands uh, or tens of thousands of domains that the person visited. So running through uh, all of this uh, for every machine you have repeatedly will sort of like make this analysis very long. So what we're doing, we're caching the responses. So if you have the same website visited by multiple people, uh, people and you run the same uh, uh, forensics analysis uh, on the OSX collector output, it will just, instead of calling again by virus API, it will just uh, call your internal hash and grab this information for you. Uh, of course, th this comes with a little bit of a uh, uh, factor of like, yeah, if there was some change in the uh, domain reputation, for instance, for file hashes, I doubt it will change so much. Well, obviously, like if there are some new things discovered, uh, then it will try to uh, call it again. So th th this hash is, uh, this uh, cache mechanism is right now very simple, but I think uh, we may think of like improving it later on. Uh, 
Any other written questions on that? Um, do you pre-populate your hash database with the public databases, things like NIST's um, hash databases? Uh, so the question is if we do pre bulk of the from, from the public that they yes. they have this cache, we we are not necessarily doing any um, pre-initialization of the database. This is more like when, when something was visited, like we will just cache the response. We're not <coughs> doing like something let's download everything at the very beginning and have, have to have a lot of for us. But this is a very nice idea, I like it. Maybe <laughs> we should also investigate something in, in that matter. Uh, similar to uh, virus toggle, uh, another source you can use is, uh, for instance, Shadow Server. Shadow Server will do something opposite, so rather than checking like the uh, scans of the files that are bad, it will actually tell you which files are good. So all of the files that are uh, start of items of the fresh systems, they will be sort of whitelisted. So it's sort of acting as a whitelist for uh, for all the hashes that are available on the on the disk. Um, and the same uh, can be said about OpenDNS for the um, domain. So uh, virus local can check for us the file hatches and domains and IP addresses. Uh, with OpenDNS, uh, DOS is it checks uh, either domains and domain reputations or IP addresses. Uh, so we can have information um, like related domains to the domain we, uh, we are looking for. Uh, this is very useful because you will spot that like maybe the domain itself is not looking very suspicious, but it's really a couple of suspicious domains, like it sits on the same IP address and has some evil stuff. Um, so it can already be some further indication that we should, we should maybe look further into this domain and uh, see if it's really uh, just disguising itself as potentially non malicious domain or it's really malicious. So. Uh, that's OpenDNS with domain filter. OpenDNS gives us around seven or eight different API endpoints. Uh, on the slides, I think there are only two mentioned uh, the related domains and the domain reputation. There is also like categorization filter. So it can give you already like category, if you spoke domain that's coming from the malware category, yeah, it's rather something bad. So <laughs> there is no way like uh, that this is something that can be considered suspicious. Uh, so, for instance, the uh, security endpoint, it gives us what uh, there is this new password coming on the uh, CTI cyber threat endpoint, and this is like next, this APT uh, password coming on. So, uh, what all these services like VirusTotal and OpenDNS and Shadow Server are trying to leverage on is this sort of like collective cyber threat intelligence. What they do is they like gather all these different pieces of information from the users. So, for instance, VirusTotal, it has all this knowledge from every sample that user are submitting. Um, so it can leverage this, and uh, thanks to the subscribing to these resources, you can already, uh, on your own, uh, read this sort of power of like uh, collective threat analysis. Uh, so this security uh, API, it will actually give you information, like for instance, the uh, domain-generated algorithm source, so it will, uh, score, so it will uh, tell you, for instance, how likely it is that this domain was uh, just generated from some um, machine that's, let's say, trying to register some domains, do some bug stuff from the domains, and then just like post it down after the day. Uh, there are some things like, for instance, uh, domain age that can be also very useful when it comes to um, analysis of the potentially malicious sources. Uh, usually, if you see something, um, downloaded from the domain was created around like a couple hours ago, a couple minutes ago. This is rather malicious. Um, this was just like generated domain and something that we do use for, for an attack. So yeah, all these different uh, filters are uh, chained together. Uh, it's very easy to add your own filter as I was showing uh, all these examples. They are just like augmenting the initial input so you can think of like Hey, if I want to do something else with file hashes, or if I want to do something else with the uh, related domains, I can just like either again run the filter, um, change them together, uh, put some new filters in between. 
Uh, you can run them separately, or you can uh, do what we uh, sort of combine in one analyzed filter, where you're just running all this suite of filter uh, as once, and we have all this information gathered. Um, yeah, it can take some time, as just like uh, collecting all this information from an uh, from this APIs like Aristotle or OpenDNS, because um, if this machine was running for a couple of months, there, there's tons of information that has to check for. Uh, so with these things like hashing, um, and as for like ideas, for instance, like people databases, it might be uh, it might be uh, a bit more uh, speedy. But we were also thinking about doing uh, something like this uh, one cloud endpoint or sort of like service endpoint for for this analyzed filter that could run automatically on the uh, machine collected from the uh, from the IT personal. Uh, so there are potentially like tons of ideas of like reusing this uh, this uh, filter. Filter uh, design part and, and creating a new one. And so, yeah, like the one last step is recommend next steps because there you will just output all this information for you. You will highlight the file hashes and potentially found as, as malicious and it will suggest you next steps. So in our case, it might be either like, yeah, let's block this website uh, on our endpoint, uh, let's uh, blacklist this uh, hash, um, or like, yeah, you should probably look at this one because it looks suspicious. So later on, it adds, adds up to like, this is sort of like this automated part, but obviously like later on there is some, some of the manual part as well that you can do uh, on your own with these uh, suggested, uh, suggested uh, next steps. Um, what we have done with all this uh, present late yeah, is, is that uh, once we had all this calls in OSX collector, we actually uh, took them out, put them in a separate library, uh, which we called Fred and Play API. It's also open source on uh, GitHub, so you can just go check it out. It uh, has this uh, sort of like Pythonic way of calling uh, all these free APIs mentioned in the filter before. So virus level open DNS and shadow server. Uh, so you can just in a few steps like go and call it on your own, include it in your own project that you're doing, automate it, so you don't have to I no longer have to go anymore like the virus of the website, but in the like input fields, um, fix it maybe will all do, do it for you. Uh, you can sort of like change it with some other tools that you're using for automation of your incident response process. Uh, what's really cool is that so we internally uh, try to use it in our several projects. So for instance, one other open source project that uh, uh, is up uh, on our GitHub page is uh, Elast Alert, sort of like alerting out of Elasticsearch uh, data. Uh, so what we are doing, if we have some some alerts uh, coming from this uh, Elast uh, Elasticsearch from from Elast Alert, uh, we can uh, add some more um, enhancements to, to Elast Alert alerts, and they will, for instance, pull uh, information from OpenDNS about particular file hashes or about particular IP addresses. And we can have this information in the uh, in the alerts as well. So it's very easy to combine it with any other product. Uh, all you need to do is just supply it with the API key. Uh, there is also like this uh, possibility to cache the uh, output in, in some sort of file. This is like very simple cache. Maybe you have some better idea about how to make it more intelligent. So looking forward for any any ideas. And, uh, and contributions. Um, so without like, let me know if you're using it or if you're interested in using it. If you have some ideas, just you can put, pull, uh, push them out on the on our GitHub page. Um, send us pull requests, and we're open to conversation. Uh, so that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, I'll be also at the party later on. So let's just together. Yeah, um, that's a really impressive tool, um, but it, it must have been a lot of work for an internal tool. Um, when you started it, how did the how did the other alternatives compare? Like, was there a commercial commercial alternative that came close to doing what you wanted to do, or? So, do you mean like the alternative to just turn like uh, forensics collection, or rather like this analysis part? Because they're like sort of. To, to separate. I guess more the analysis part. Like analysis the analysis part, part kind of seems like a like malware yeah. detection 
and I'm kind of surprised that there wasn't something that did that already. So I think uh, those are all like around when I was trying like around a year ago that we started doing all this process. At that point of time, um, so we, we, us exploit what I uh, haven't mentioned is also based on some other project uh, on GitHub called I think Biosex Auditor, which was doing sort of like um, a similar kind of thing like just pulling information from all the sources, but it wasn't as elaborate as when it comes to like for instance this timestamp or like different uh, sort of formats that it was outputting. So it was quite hard to analyze this output. Uh, for us, what was really important at, at, at the very beginning before this whole automation with the alpha filters, uh, what we were doing was just to um, grab all this information manually sort of in this large output. Uh, it was very important to have like unified uh, way of doing that. Right now we, uh, we do also uh, sort of more um, reactive way of looking at what's going on at the endpoints with uh, OS queries. I think that Facebook of that sort of a couple of months ago. Uh, so this is sort of like more reactive way of, of the same print, you know, sort of principles governing forensics or like information what's going on in the system. And, uh, OS, OS queries more like real time. Thank you. Yeah, please go on. The, the tools you've built start to are reactive tools. So you, you add, if I understand correctly, you analyze a laptop releases for a device you suspect there's a problem. Yeah. What you very close to with your analysis platform is to be able to start doing proactive intelligence, proactive um, finding problems before you know about them. Mm -hmm. Because you, you, you have we suspect these sites are bad from this laptop. Who else has been those sites? Who else's laptops have got those sites in history? To start stitching together a more complete picture of your organization. Yes, so I think like, uh, so the question is more like about this, this proactive part of, of, of this incident response. So yeah, let's say what we designed, built and, and what was it was sort of like designed for, at least this, this forensics collection part was to do really like, uh, yeah, once there is an incident, we just grab the machine, we take it off the network, we just figure out what's wrong with it. And then like, uh, yeah, we can do several things like block this domain, so uh, stop proliferation. Some yeah. other users have have the same, uh, if they were victims of the same phishing campaign, uh, and sort of things. Uh, but then will you follow it, follow it back so you'll see one laptop. So I think this is more coming with what we are trying right now to achieve with OS Query, where this is sort of like more uh, proactive source of information for us, what's going on in that particular time frame uh, with all the corporate machines. Uh, what this can give us insight to is like, yeah, I mean, potentially like we have right now tons of like suspicious file hashes, suspicious uh, domains, we build this uh, blacklist on our own text to this analysis, and we can right now use it, for instance, uh, combined with the tools like OS Query to uh, to have more uh, more proactive vision of like, yeah, so from this analysis we we follow this machine, and then right now, thanks to OS Query, we can see that, yeah, also these other machines can, can run. So yeah, there is definitely uh, a benefit of not using this uh, tools in, in isolation, of like combining all these different uh, uh, possibility that's what was possible to, to achieve with them. So definitely like um, maybe we are not as, as excellent right now as, as, as uh, or with, um, with trying to combine all this sort of information. Uh, with OSFX uh, collector and through like this analyze filter we are running right now for, for a couple months. With OS query we just about like started uh, doing that. So uh, thanks to help of Facebook from Facebook we were also worried. Uh, to uh, speed up a bit, like uh, some part of like analysis of what we're doing there. You mentioned the abstract and patches for files. Did you think about uh, adding a function to file uh, uh, to file? You're comparing patches on suspicious files with the database of virtual files. Did you think about uploading that to files? Yeah, so about uploading the binaries to Aristotle. So uh, this is a bit uh, more problematic here because this is sort of like our analysis went uh, uh, 
especially like this forensics collection and stuff, I think sort of like our assumption is like, yeah, we should stop, stop bleeding as, as, as well as we could. So we potentially immediately when we have some, some really like antivirus alert, we just take machine off the network because we don't know what's going on there. So the point is like, when this is happening and when we run the forensics collection, we don't really have network connection. So this is like one of the problems. Uh, maybe later <coughs> during the analysis will sometimes uh, upload that. If we don't see the file hash in the virus level, we will try to do this um, manual step. But the, the problem with it is it's always a, it's some sort of manual step. It's not pretty right now automated in any way, so we don't do it on a like, very regular basis. We more rely on this information that's already gathered there, so like file hashes. I think that was a question over there as well. Yeah, and I was just wondering what your thoughts were on the new sort of rootless security that's coming out for OSX and how it might affect what the tool could get from PLIS and the system forward and things like that. Yeah, so I think uh, this is a very interesting comment. I haven't spent so much time on like analyzing what's going on there uh, with, with this like rootless capabilities. I think, yeah, the assumption here is that this runs a sudo, so uh, that's why you can collect all this different information. Uh, so yeah, that, that might be very interesting to, to see like if it's sort of like preventing us from, from what we're doing currently. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, there are no more questions. Uh, just kind of a thought about rootless addicting iOS. Have you done any work with analysis of um, Apple mobile devices in the tools you have? Uh, no, not really. No, this is more like for the for the MacBooks. Yep. So, um, unless I'm completely mistaken, this tool runs on a live a live OS X machine. And uh, is it not then susceptible to advanced malware targeting the program itself and maybe hooking into it and manipulating the data that comes back and tainting it? Yeah, I mean, for particularly a lot of not malware, it, it could be possible. To do it. Uh, what we uh, what it is also possible to do is instead of running it directly on the machine that's infected, just to uh, take the image of the machine and just like uh, mount the image and run it from a separate machine. So it's, it's sort of like easy to circumvent the problem. We haven't really spotted this as as, as really uh, something. Right now, it's a very nice idea. <laughs> if you plan to release a proof of concept, well, obviously because it's open source as well. I mean, it, you, uh, you give everybody the, the code to try yeah, and I mean, defeat it. Like all this, the way it, it uses all these sources of information. Yeah, this yeah. is like public knowledge. It's not doing anything, let's say, uh, magical. So yeah, it's, it's, it's the, potentially there could be a malware that, that would be uh, yeah. able to override all this. There are no questions. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks for coming out and I'll see you later.